All right, what's going on dudes and welcome back to Minecraft. It has been quite a while since I've last made a video in which I've taken a look at a mod, so I thought we'd make a triumphant return with an awesome one. This is Red Power, and in short, it's everything you have ever wanted out of Redstone, all your hopes and dreams bundled up nice and neatly into zip file compression wrapping paper and hand it over to you to do awesome things with. So, <laughs> how do we start off here? Well, we have to craft the most basic of items, which is the red alloy wire. Now, you may be asking yourself, or be asking me, why am I not just using too many items? And that's actually because the damage values of many of the wiring items are too high to be read by too many items. And in the past, there was a patch for this. However, since the mod was updated to 1.8, the patch doesn't seem to have been as well, so the workaround is that you craft each of the wiring items that you need. So right now I'm crafting the basic red alloy wire. And then you go into your inventory editor and you set the amount to 111. And from there you can get infinite items as you see I have in here. So with this basic red alloy wire, you can see a little example I've set up here. You can place it on the ground, straight up on vertical surfaces, as well as ceilings. And it basically just behaves like your standard redstone wiring with some enhancements, obviously, by where you can place it. But from there, you can get a bit more complex. So we can actually take some of our red oil alloy wire, and I've got some different setups of items in here. And what we can do is we can insulate that wiring by crafting it the same way but with some wool surrounding it. So depending on the color of wool you will get a different color of insulated wire with the orange wool that I've got here you get orange insulated wire. So that's that. Now from there you can actually take that orange insulated wire and you can craft it into bundled wire. And I'll show you what that does in just a moment. Now say you accidentally crafted the wrong color of wire and you want to change it to something else. So we'll get one of our dyes or a couple of them and you can place your colored insulated wire into your inventory or your workbench, excuse me, and you can simply recolor it to something else. Or if I still have the wrong color, I can just recolor it once again. So that's how that works. Now, what's the purpose of all these different colored wires? Well, it's because they actually don't cross over with each other. So you'll notice right here that I've got the orange right next to the blue, next to the green, and they're not mixing with each other. Whereas if it were your standard red alloy, they would cross over like so. And you probably don't want that in a whole bunch of different situations. But what does this bundled cable do? That is one of these. And it actually allows you to cross over between the different colors. I'll go into more detail in just a moment, but you'll notice if I flip the switch here, it simply goes straight on to each light block in front of me here. These light blocks are another addition with the mod, except you don't have to craft them. They do show up in too many items, which is why I'm not going over how you craft them. So those are the basics of the different colored wires. You can also set it up like so. I'm not entirely sure why you would want to, but it does work like this as well in a straight line. Now from here, you can actually craft these different types of freestanding wires. Now the difference here is that with these colored cables and the, your basic red alloy wire, it has to be placed on some sort of surface. But with these freestanding wires, this is your standard red alloy wire, but it's in freestanding form. This is your bundled cable, and it is also in its freestanding form. So the way you make these is by taking these cover plates. Now these cover plates here, those do not have to be crafted if you use too many items, which is why I'm not going over how you craft them. But the freestanding wire does again have to be crafted, and then you use your inventory editor to set it to an infinite value. So. This is how you craft your freestanding red alloy wire. Clay jacketed. I was just using clay in order to demonstrate you can actually use any different type of cover. It doesn't matter. So you can distinguish between your different types. So I'll use stone on the bundled cable. And from there we get our different types of freestanding cables. So. From here, we can flip the switch, and you may be wondering why the blocks aren't lighting up. So the way you actually connect the freestanding wire to the ground is with a piece 
of the red alloy wire for the standing freestanding red alloy cable or a bundled cable for the freestanding. So place that and then boom, our blocks light up. So this right here carries the current into the light blocks and turn them on and off. Same with the bundled cable, except there is one big difference here. And the cool thing is, so up here we have an orange output and a magenta output, and down here we have a magenta input and an orange input. So if I flip the magenta input, only the magenta output lights up. So this bundled cable will keep track of which signal is going through it, and it will only output to the proper wiring. So you don't get any crossover, but it keeps everything nice, neat, and compact by keeping all the signals in one single cable. So I can go ahead and flip the orange one as well, and it'll turn on the orange output, turn off the magenta inputs, and it will also turn off the magenta output. So there is no crossover in this big bundled cable. It doesn't just jumble your signal up and outputs from one single output. It keeps track of everything, and it's very, very handy. So. From there, you can say combine it all into one. So flip this lever, it's going to go over to the orange inputs over here, and it's going to only light up the orange output. And same goes for every other input over here. It'll only light up its respective cables output. And that's just a, an example of combining all the different types of setups you can do with the, the different types of wiring. And here's just one more example of how the bundled cable doesn't cross over. When you input with green, it only outputs the green as well. So blue, orange, so on and so forth. So those are the basics of the different types of wiring included with the mod. And you can use those to do a whole host of different things that you would either have to do with an immensely complex setup with your standard vanilla redstone or things that you couldn't possibly have done at all before. Now another very useful part of this mod comes in the form of all these pre-built logic gates. So I'll go over them really briefly and give a quick overview of what they do. This is a timer. You can right click on it to either increase or decrease how long it takes to spin around and emit a pulse. Sequencer will spin around in circles and it will emit an output pulse every time that it goes over one of these torches. Again, just like the timer, you can change how fast it takes to go around, make it take longer, or make it go slower. RS Norlatch, you're probably all very well familiar with at this point. Each button will flip the output to a different block. NOR gates will simply maintain the opposite states of any of the inputs. What you can do is actually right click this and it'll change which sides are inputs. So if you want to have more compact wiring, say running parallel to here without interfering with this gate, that's what the right clicking will achieve. OR gate simply turns on if any of your inputs go on. NAND gate, N NAND gate, whichever you prefer to call it, I'm not sure which is the right pronunciation, but this will, your input will stay on unless all of the inputs are turned on, and then it will invert. And again, right clicking will change your inputs like so, so that if you want more compact wiring or you simply only want two inputs to it, that's how it works. AND gate is the opposite of a NAND gate, obviously. Once all your inputs are on, the output will go on as well. Right click to change your inputs. XNOR gates, both of your inputs have to be in opposite states in order for your output to do what it's supposed to do, whether it be XNOR or XOR, which is right here. Inputs in opposite states in order to get your output to go on. Pulse generator will emit a redstone pulse every time you flip the lever. It doesn't matter whether the input stays true or not, it'll simply output a one tick pulse. Flip flop, each time you hit the button, the other side will turn on. So it flip flops the current each time you hit it. A not gate is basically an inverter with multiple outputs. A counter, flip the lever a set amount of times that you can change by right clicking and it'll toggle on over between outputs. So once again, I can flip this lever now. It'll 
toggle in the opposite direction certain amount of times that can be set by right clicking and it'll move on over to the other output multiplexer this flip-flops between which side is your active switch so right now it's on the right flipping the right will turn on your output flip it over there and this side controls your output pretty simple and a repeater finally I'm sure you're all very well familiar with what a repeater is uh, this simply has a very long delay option that's the only main difference from the vanilla repeater so it'll take quite a while to output that signal when you have it at full delay so now what do we get when we combine all of this red power amazingness together well actually mostly just the wiring from the first part I don't use any of the logic gates for this except your standard vanilla repeater this is a super simple seven segment display each time I flip one of these switches out pops the corresponding value and where in the past this would have taken a tremendous amount of ingenuity in order to accomplish I've never bothered to sit down and, and try to learn how it all works. I leave that to the, the genius people who make the computers and the, the clocks in Minecraft <laughs> and, and look at them in awe. But with this, I actually sort of decided to emulate one of the example creations that was in the Red Power thread on Minecraft form. So each time you flip the lever, out pops the value. And the way it works is by simply keeping track of each of these different colored inputs so each segment on the display corresponds to a different colored wire so all you have to do is wire each of these inputs to the proper type of wiring so as you may recall this bundled cable will keep track of which inputs you have put into it so when you say for one input light gray and pink it's only going to output light gray and pink and let's show this off right here so when you have the light gray and pink inputs it's only going to output light gray and pink and it's going to display a one the reason we have the repeaters here is because otherwise the current would go back into the wiring over here and it would just cause all these inputs to trigger and it would it would make it display eights every time in short <laughs> so when we flip the one light gray and pink show let's flip say five so five displays out front and on the other side we simply have the corresponding inputs yellow blue orange brown and gray and that's about it for how the display works it's it's super simple now next step would obviously be to make it count but yeah that's that's about it red power wiring making super complex things much more simple and easy to work with so i hope you guys have enjoyed this video and that's about it links to download the mod in the description and i will talk to you all later